So the words cannot actually directly give you transcendental knowledge in a kind of one-to-one -one exchange, but they can cultivate the heart, clear the consciousness, and inspire you to do the practice that leads you to the actual experience. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in the end of his Jaiva Dharma book, speaking about eternal nature of the soul in relation with God, says, ultimately this process is bringing you to the spiritual plane of existence, the natural place for the soul. And that is our practice that we are performing. That will be realized in your heart, which will be called Swarup Siddhi, realization of the spiritual form. And by cultivating the practice, continuing from that stage, it will lead you to what's called Sampati Dasa, which is the actual uh, entrance into the spiritual universe in, a, in the specific abode according to your desired uh, relationship with God. Uh, what I want to speak about specifically tonight is the idea we're going to carry off from last time, which is Krishna going back to Vrindavan. And we're going to talk about our soul's journey to Vrindavan and why Vrindavan is almost a necessity. Why is Vrindavan almost a spiritual necessity, not just for us personally, but why it is necessarily the abode of the Lord. And I would challenge, if you believe in God, for anyone watching, then Krishna must be in Vrindavan. <laughs> this is my challenge. I'm not even here to argue and debate and establish this idea. But if you believe in God, Krishna is in Vrindavan. Krishna appears in this earthly plane. This is called Boma Vrindavan. Vrindavan manifested on earth. And that is a manifestation of the spiritual upon the material realm. We have other examples of that. The properly authorized deity of the Lord is a way that the spiritual plane manifests in the material plane. Those who are very advanced devotees, when they're chanting the names of Krishna, the pure name, they're directly in contact with the spiritual dimension. And it's important for us to remember that actually our soul is a particle of spiritual nature. And so there's this long-standing debate about did we fall from the spiritual world? Where did we come from? And it's based on this material idea again of all based on temporary ideas of past, present, and future and material time. The soul is eternal, eternally spiritual. That means, are we ever in the material world? <laughs> are you in the material world? My physical body is in the material world. Yes. Where is your soul right now? <laughs> Where's your soul, Mangala? Somewhere. Yes, so the soul pervades the body and it's the field of awareness, but it is spiritual. It's not material. The reason I'm saying that is just like we say, oh, is the deity God or not? But there's a process by which the Lord mercifully appears and the spiritual appears in the material realm. The idea here is that we don't believe in the deity, we don't believe in the name, we don't believe in Tulsi Plaid, we don't believe in the holy places. Do you believe in yourself? Do you believe that you exist and your consciousness? So what I'm saying is that consciousness that you are itself is spiritual. So if you believe in yourself, you believe in the spiritual dimension. Okay? If you believe in yourself that you exist, then you believe in the spiritual dimension. Consciousness is on the spiritual dimension. But gross materialists always want to tether it to matter. And even in their spiritual idea about consciousness, they will continue to say that it is only bound in the material paradigm. Right? Now I'll ask you another question, all right? If you look in the temple room, we have light bulbs. Are you the bulb or are you the light? <laughs> oh, 
What are you? Raj Prabhu. Temporarily the bulb. You are not the bulb. No, no you're not. <laughs> but the bulb is the expression of the light, I suppose. It's the vessel of the light. It's not really the expression of the light, though. It's a way through that which the light shines forth into this world. So in this example, the spiritual dimension is a higher dimension than the material dimension, and the soul is on the spiritual dimension. But because we are now in this world, in this body, it's called tatashta, marginal. We are conditioned souls on the marginal stage. That means not in the spiritual dimension, not in the material dimension. And therefore Krishna says, what in the Gita? Yantra rudrani maya. Here we are masquerading in the great bulb ball of life, right? Wearing the many masks, life after life, you know, as our cats, as our dogs, as the trees, in so many unlimited forms. But are you the bulb or are you the light? What is your essence? I am this bulb. That's why if you study any of the teachings of the Upanishads, of the Bhagavad Gita, or the Puranas, what does it teach you? The first platform of spiritual knowledge is that I am not this, I am that. That Tvamasi, I am that. Now we argue about what does that mean, <laughs> right? I am that. I'm trying to, you know, what we would call reverse engineer you could say belief in God and the necessity for Vrindavan on the spontaneously, right? If you believe in God, Vrindavan is necessary. And if you believe in yourself, the spiritual dimension is real. This is the challenge. If you believe in yourself that you exist, that means spirit, consciousness, no matter how much they'll try to explain away consciousness as simply a product of matter, they'll never be successful. They will only bewilder the minds of those who are naturally atheistic, who are not ready to realize the spiritual nature of themselves and God. Right? So that's not our primary topic, but this is the principle here. I am that. What is that? So the Sastra will say, Aham Brahmasmi, I am spirit. What is the nature of that spirit? Therefore, it is not just some idea, I'm spirit. I am just light. No, I am a particular particle of light. But again, remember what I said in the beginning? These words do not illuminate the ultimate reality. The ultimate reality is illuminated by your practice. Understand? Bulb, light, cats and dogs, transmigration, reincarnation. That does not illuminate reality in your subjective experience. Therefore, Sanatana Dharma, this eternal path, teaches you a practice. The practice or the process of achieving your real state. So now we can argue. In the beginning of the book, Jaiva Dharma, the eternal nature, it says, what is the natural state of water? What is the Dharma or the constitutional nature of water? Mangala? It's liquid. It's liquid. That's called the Nitya Dharma, the natural state. Vapor, ice, these are called nishargas, acquired states of being. Again, these are just words, but they are leading you, hopefully, towards the practice. Through the practice, you can come to your own personal realization of the highest truths. 
That's why in the end of Jaiva Dharma, this great book teaching about the eternal nature of life, the soul in relation with God, he says, when the disciple comes to the highest stage called Bhav, spiritual ecstasy, he asks, what is the nature of that divine realm? Specifically, he says, you must enter it. You must enter it. Don't be over attached to the words and use those as a placebo for the truth. You see? Oh, I understand everything. Great. <laughs> right? It's like a kid driving a toy car. You grow up so that you can actually experience this in reality. This is what is advised. And don't think this is such a difficult process that it is ultimately unachievable. It is achievable by countless saints in the past and not only by saints, by simple, simple hearted people. Saint doesn't mean a superhero spiritualist. A saint can be dressed in the simplest of garb. That means in the humblest of origins, in the humblest of states. So now bringing us to Krishna. In the end of this book, Jaiva Dharma, when it's called entering the spiritual abode, he talks about Krishna's realm in this manifest pastimes of earth. He talks about it like that. What is Krishna's Vrindavan? And he says, by understanding Vrindavan in this world and by meditating on the Vrindavan that has appeared in this world, the pastimes of Krishna that have appeared in this world, this can ultimately lead us to the spiritual plane, which is where consciousness or Atma is truly at its natural state, where water is liquid. Now it's not liquid, now it's ice. So if you want to be in your Nitya Dharma, your natural state, that is beyond liberation. Now the light has decided for some reason it's a bulb. And then when the light goes off, we're dead. Just because it moves to a different bulb. Expiration date on that bulb arrived. Now somebody figures out, so oh, useless, take it to the trash, bury it burn it, dispose of it. So we have to get to the topic of Krishna, but I'm working there. <clears throat> if you believe in God, Krishna is necessary. Vrindavan is necessary. Based on all the scriptures, his own statements, the statements of the realized sages who have perceived this truth, beginning with Lord Brahma, the first created being, over a hundred chapters, what is he saying? Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bajami. I worship the Supreme Lord Govinda Krishna. And then he describes, he indicates with words that divine abode, Shreya Shritim. He says, he speaks about the nature of Vrindavan. Lakshmi Sasrasatasam Brahma Sevyamanam Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bajami. He speaks about that supreme abode in his own words. And in that line, and in different Vaishnav lines, that supreme abode is described. And if you study the scriptures fully and the teachings of the sages, Vrindavan is not only the scripturally sound, you know, highest abode of the Lord, but if you truly study and practice, it's the logical destination, it's the logical highest abode. Even though logic is fallible, reason is limited, and the mind cannot pierce beyond material existence. By the practice, it will come to the realization. So therefore our gurus would say, you should be a spiritual scientist. That's what our gurus would say. Be a spiritual scientist, perform the experiment in your own life. And you will be happier in this life, perhaps, 
hopefully, but you will go beyond birth and death. You will transcend the illusion of the false self by realizing the eternal self. And this is why we are gathered here. So Krishna came from that spiritual realm to the material world. I'm not going to get so long into the argument about why Vrindavan, and why Krishna, but we'll continue in this thread, right? In this theme for some time. I think it's, I think there are good arguments for it. God is not an old man. That's one of them. <laughs> kind of, in, what kind of idea is that God is an old man worried about the sandbox of material life? Where, there's constant suffering, war, evil. And, and that, is, that is the final limit of Godhead, the old man in the sky. That is the local demigod. That's it. Within the material sandbox. The transcendental form of the Lord is beyond Maya. You know, it's said about Krishna, Krishna is not even aware of hell. In the spiritual board, you think that's what God's thinking about? That what happens when conditioned souls cause the ultimate evil in this world and have to suffer the consequences in a hellish condition? That's what he's thinking about. For the Bridge of Basis, the material world doesn't even exist. It's not like, you know, like us, right? Well, we're very happy here. And then you open the news and see war is here, war is there. This is here, this is that. <laughs> you think Radha and Krishna are, you know, and Radha Kund, and then they come back home and check the news, what's going on in Sangsara, Earth number 2,564. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a little cruel, you know? But, you know, they talk about different dimensions, fifth dimension, sixth dimension, that's multiverses, right? So many universes. The universes are described to be like grains of sand. That's how they're described, like mustard seeds. How many earths, how many ways for the consciousness that is separated from God to experience happiness and distress in material existence, unlimited ways. But that is not God's concern. The God of gods, Ishwara Parama Krishna, that is not his concern. Maybe God's concern, but it's not God's God's concern. That is Krishna. Ishwara Parama Krishna. And the saints say what? Many people afraid of suffering in material life, they pray to the verses of Supreme through the Vedas. Shruti Mittare, Bharata Manye. They study the Mahabharat and they pray with the Vedic scriptures. But who do I take shelter of? Ahi Ahamiha Nandam Braje Yasyalinde Param Brahma. That Supreme Para Brahma is playing in the courtyard of his father Nanda. I worship his father Nanda. So God is not an old man. He can take on that form as he can take on any form he pleases, as he takes on countless forms. But the Supreme Lord of all Lords, as described by Lord Brahma, the first created being, all the Vedic scriptures describe that, Bhagavad Gita, all the different sages, Nada, Vyas, and so forth, describe this. Krishna himself describes this. The devotees realize this. But this is the reality. So Krishna, from that eternal realm of Vrindavan, He said, Radharani, my dear Shakti, it is time for me to go again to earth. Which one? That one. It's time for me to go to Prithivi, earth. Why she has prayed? Because she is overburdened with demonic rulers. She has prayed for relief to Lord Brahma. He prayed to me, I must go. Please, will you come with me? I will appear in my full incarnation, not Varaha, Radharani doesn't appear with Varaha, right? Kurma, Matsya, different incarnations. But with Krishna, he's saying, I will go myself. 
We talked about this the other day. We caught up to this stage. Krishna's only reason for Advent is not just to establish dharma, pious morality and religious principles, and not just to defeat the demons. Otherwise, Varahadev, Matsya, Kurma can do that. Parashuram can do that. Kill the demons, save the righteous, establish dharma. Krishna's reason for Advent is what? Anugrahaya bhaktanam manusham deham ashratam yadrashi tadrashi krita. Perform his very attractive pastime so that after doing all that dharma establishment, killing the demons, helping protect the sadhus, those souls who can become attracted to his pastimes can go beyond samsara, can go where that soul is in its spiritual dimension where it's meant to be, right? Now we are light in the bulb, but that is a material form. Bulb is a material form. That spiritual entity, the soul, which is very self-luminous, has a self-luminous form. That is the soul's body. And because of illusion, it's a natural thing, right? The soul needs a body embodiment because the soul has a spiritual body, right? So it's attached to incarnation. It's attached to embodiment. We will always be embodied. Even if we are in a ghost form, we have a ghost body, right? We're attached to that ghost body. So the idea is that's because the soul has its body. So Krishna told Radharani, let us go to earth. Radharani refused first. She did not want to go. Why? Why do you want us to go to Martya Loka? This is how it's described in Sanskrit. The abode of death. That's how they call earth. Our beautiful blue ball or blue plane, as you prefer to think of it. Why should we go to that place, right? No matter how much you want to examine and dissect it and be attached to it, ultimately, what is it? You know, the grass, what happened to this beautiful grass here? It's dead. <laughs> <laughs> we harvested it so that we could have a nice lawn. <laughs> but it doesn't mind, it can rejoin the cycle of life, reanimate. Right? Radharani didn't want to go. This is how it's described in the scripture, in the Puranas. Krishna requested her. She said, oh, remember as Ram, I was Sita. What happened? You want to subject me to that? The life of Sita? Krishna said, please, please. Finally, she said, if my Vrindavan comes, then I will go. Understand, even Supreme Lord as Lakshmi Narayan and their Supreme Vaikuntha abode is there, but higher than that is Vrindavan. I'm not going to get into, you know, trying to logically explain this and spend hours on that, but as described in the scriptures, as described by Lord Brahma, Vrindavan is the highest abode. And Radharani said, I will only go to this world if my Vrindavan comes. She didn't say Dwarka. She didn't say Vaikuntha. If Vrindavan comes, she said, if Govardhan comes, if Jamuna comes, if, if Tulasi Devi comes, if all of our associates come, then I will come to earth. So that spiritual abode came. Radharani said, I will not leave. Like, you know, when Krishna, when Ram left Ayodhya, Sita followed. When Krishna left Vrindavan, Radharani stayed in Vrindavan. She said, I will establish the importance of Vrindavan. Why? If you really want to help people, bring them to Vrindavan. Otherwise, your help is just like going to the hospital because you have a bad stomach. And then right when you get out, again, you eat food in such a way that you have a bad stomach again. <laughs> What other examples can we give? So many, right? Temporary relief, that's it. Most of our so-called spirituality is just a painkiller 
for material life. Am I right? <laughs> Most of our spiritual instruction is painkillers for material life. How to be peaceful. Oh. <laughs> right? Oh. Just give me a good hit to that good stuff. We want more than morphine. We want fentanyl, spiritual fentanyl. What is that, Mayavad? <laughs> I don't exist. God doesn't exist. Ultimately, nothing exists. Arrgh! We get so frustrated. We just want nothing to exist. And we start to believe it enough so that we can feel numb. Isn't that what they say, right? Comfortably numb. What do they say? This is the English way. What's the, what are those lyrics? Quiet desperation, but civilized, while we're also conquering the world. So, spiritual life should not just be a painkiller for material life. Spiritual life should lead you to spiritual life. Okay? Spiritual life should lead you to spiritual life. Right? So, we do our practice, we meditate. Om. We meditate. There's a beautiful verse, actually, that we do before yagyas and spiritual practices. I'll chant it for you now. <clears throat> Om Tad Vishnu Paramang Padam Stada Pashyanti Suraya Diviva Chakshura Tatam Tanti Prasa Vipranyava Jagri Vangso Samindate Vishnu Yat Paramang Padam Bye the meditation, by the japa, by the sadhana, which is called the process, the abhideya, we can actually achieve spiritual life. All right? Not the painkiller. Right? Spiritual life. So Radharani came with Krishna to this world. Krishna performed for the first 10 years his Vrindavan pastimes. Some of those Vrindavan pastimes are called Nityalila, eternal pastimes. Some are called Naimatikalila. Of the two, killing demons is called Naimatikalila. People like it. It's fun. It's interesting. From childhood, Krishna, Putana came, Trinavarta came, Denukasura, Bakasura, Kamsa himself, Chanura Mushtika. Ralamba Sura, so many great demons. Very interesting. Krishna showed his heroism, all material life. But it's It's not material life, but it's in the material plane. It's transcendental. Krishna's activities are all transcendental. Janma karma chame divyam evam yoveti tatvata tyakto deha punar janma neti mameti so arjuna. All of Krishna's birth activities are transcendental. Those who understand them as such. Upon giving up this material form, we'll enter the spiritual abode, never suffer with pangs of birth and death in samsara. But still, of the two, killing of the demons is temporary pastime. What does it mean, temporary pastime? Nasato vidite bhava, within the material realm, not eternal. So in his first 10 years, he performed also some resemblance of his eternal pastimes. It's called Gokula and Goloka. And Gokula is the realm of Vrindavan that manifests in this earthly realm, material realm, and Goloka is in the spiritual dimension. In the spiritual dimension, Krishna is not attacked by those demonic forces. That's what he comes to earth to do. <laughs> so he performs that play. Why am I mentioning this? Krishna stayed in Vrindavan for some years, did Nityalila and Naimatikalila, eternal pastimes and these other pastimes. And then he left Vrindavan, went to Mathura, Naimatikalila. Dwarka, some Nityalila in the Aishwarya realm is there. Nityalila means Krishna's eternal pastimes in the abode of opulence. But the eternal abode, we've been discussing this for three, four classes now. Aradyo Bhagavan Brajesatanayasta Dhamma Brindavanam. The supreme worshipful Lord, the Lord of all Lords is Krishna, the son 
of Nanda. And his own non-different self is the land of Vrindavan. That means his own internal potency, Sri Radha, manifests as Vrindavan. So I'm going to try to speed up here, otherwise we won't get through the topic. Unless everyone's comfortable, doesn't mind being in the dark. All right? But this is where we're up to so far, okay? Who's ready for the next chapter? Okay, good? Next chapter. Keep going. So, <clears throat> Krishna performed all his activities. Astenapur, Kurukshetra, Mahabharat, Bhagavad Gita. If you read Bhagavad Gita, most of the Bhagavad Gita is in relation to what? Prakriti, material nature, kal, time, karma, how to transcend it. But this is not Niti Lila. But it's bringing you to Niti Lila. I tell people, you know, if you're getting on the elevator of spiritual life in this line, don't get off on the painkiller floor. Of that, what does that mean? Oh, by chanting Hare Krishna, I can become peaceful in this world. I can take Tylenol with this mantra, right? I can be peaceful, Shanti. This is important, but it's not the top floor. It's not beyond samsara. We don't want to get off the... Painkillers are good. You know, I'm not I'm making light of pain. This also is a painkiller. But don't get addicted to it, right? And then become an addict. Ultimately, if you're an addict of chanting, japa, good, in any way. But the reason it's important to keep the aim high is because then you can get stuck. Aim high. This is why the story is there of Arjuna and the, the wooden bird in the tree, his guru taught him, his archery guru said, shoot the eye of the bird, the center of the eye, the black dot in the center of the eye of the bird at the top of the tree. And he first asked everyone, what do you see? What do you see? Our Guru is very one-pointed, Srila Gurudev. So he said, what do you see? I see the tree, I see the people around the tree, I see the sky. Put your bow down. Don't humiliate yourself, you're gonna miss it too far. It was only Arjuna who said, I only see that center of the eye that you've instructed me to shoot at. This is to tell us, Aim for the highest thing. Everything else will be included within that. Whatever part of spiritual life you can practice the most sincerely, in that sincerest prayer of yours, aim for the highest thing. All other things will be included within that as necessary. You will not suffer the pain of birth and death. Our Guru would say, right? You can jump over the head of all problems. All problems, Gurudev would say, right? What would he say? Like that, right? Jump over all problems. So aim high. So Krishna, why are we saying this? Krishna showed this, that ultimately we should aim for Vrindavan. And Radharani showed this, ultimately you should aim for Vrindavan. Radharani came one time out of Vrindavan. On Krishna's specific request, all the Brijabhasis, Nanda showed everyone came out of Vrindavan to Kurukshetra, the battlefield. And there, Radharani said, come back to Vrindavan. <laughs> when she met with Krishna, she said, you are that same Krishna. You are Braj Krishna. You are not Dwarka Krishna. That is only your persona. One aspect, Dwarka Krishna but you are Braj Krishna. You are that same Krishna, remember? Remember when we were in the spiritual world and you asked me to come and I said, I'll only come if Vrindavan comes, if Govardhan comes, if Jamuna comes. We think of it, Govardhan, a name, Jamuna, a name. But what is that nature of that divine realm where the Lord is blissfully absorbed in his loving affairs? with his eternal associates in all forms of rasa, in all relationships, the perfect relationships of love, in all different varieties of possible pure, spontaneous love. That is Vrindavan, pure, without any 
Anartha. All the demons are what? Anarthas. If you read Bhakti Nur Thakur talking about the different demons, they're all our internal demons. One after another, one after another. We fight and defeat. But Radharani said, you've done that, Krishna. Now return to Vrindavan. Krishna said one more. <laughs> Dantavakra, the last demon. But it's very interesting. I just want to now, before Krishna comes home and becomes, you know, shows his manifestation of Jagannath, I just want to give you a, not even the stories, but the summary. Krishna's pastimes on this earth, if you read Bhagavatam, showing not just that philosophically he is God. From childhood, first he defeats all the demons, then he defeats the demigods. <laughs> right? Because sometimes the demigods think they're God. <laughs> so first, from childhood, Krishna defeats the demons. Putana, the witch who kills the infant. Trinavarta, the whirlwind demon. They all metaphorically represent different uh, spiritual obstacles, different, you know, uh, deformities, you could say, different things that need to be transcended. Then after that, what Indra, the local god, what we would call the angry god, Yahweh. He gets angry when he's not worshipped. Don't you know I am the God you must worship? These are names I'm using. I'm not stating this as parallels. But the idea is the local God got angry. Why is Krishna, the supreme God, being worshipped? How is he God? He's just a cowherd boy? All of these problems, all of these doubts were already solved in Krishna's pastimes. Right? Krishna is just a coward boy. How is he God? There's so many stories we'll go through. But just understand first. Huh? Lord We're getting there. Yeah. The local god Indra. And then before him, who is higher than Indra? Brahma. On a higher dimension. Indra is just right up there. You know, he may be watching. Who knows? <laughs> Our Gurudev would say for Govardhan Puja, Indra always comes and watches. You know? And when Krishna performs his Rasa dance, all the demigods come in their heavenly airplanes. So this is, you know, when you look up at the sky, not on, based on Western material science, but if you think of it in terms of layers of height and states of being, there is the spiritual layer, not the spiritual layer, the material layer that is called heaven. And there is a God of that heaven called Indra. And he is the king of the demigods. He is not God. And when he tried to defeat Krishna, Krishna very playfully, what did he do? Lifted up Govardhan Hill. Then later who came? Okay, next level. Krishna defeated the demons. Now Indra, next level who? Brahma. First created being, architect of the universe, received God's power to manifest life on earth and the whole material realm, all the 14 planetary systems, all the different galaxies, all part of Lord Brahma's manifestation, which is part of the dream of Lord Vishnu. And he thought Vishnu is the supreme God, not Krishna. How can this boy be God? He is just playing in the fields of Vrindavan with his friends. Why is he doing that? Because he's showing the nature of the spiritual realm. The nature of the spiritual realm is blissful. It's love. It's friendship. Spiritual romance. It's necessary. If you believe in God, Krishna in Vrindavan is supreme. This is our challenge for anyone who believes in God. For the atheists, what can we do? We can beat on drums for to the end of time. You still can't make an atheist believe in God. You can try, but ultimately they will have to believe. You can't force it. Even if you beat on the drum of God, 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 till the end of time. I can't hear you. <laughs> right. no, 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 no. If you believe in God, for those who believe in God, Krishna is there. Vrindavan. It's the highest abode. There are many other aspects of the Godhead. There are many other divine abodes, but Krishna in Vrindavan is the highest abode. This is the teaching of Lord Chaitanya. Aradyo Bhagavan Brajeshatanya Stadham of Vrindavanam. So Lord Brahma tried to defeat Krishna, very easily bewildered. Towards the end of Krishna's pastimes, before coming back to Vrindavan, 
Krishna even defeats Lord Shiva in battle. Lord Shiva is a great devotee of Krishna, but to show Krishna's supremacy, Lord Shiva challenged Krishna. There's a great story. We're, we'll do it and we'll give it its own place and time. Be de described beautifully, very beautiful. Krishna defeats that personality. Varuna, also. Varuna, the god of the ocean, also defeated by Krishna. Right? So Krishna, what does he do? Defeats the demons, the local god Indra, the higher god Brahma, Varuna, even Lord Shiva, higher than Brahma. Brahma is generally a soul empowered by God. And if no soul is qualified to occupy the post of Lord Brahma, the creator of the material universe, you know, he receives the ingredients from God. This is a very interesting history, but basically the ingredients of material, the material aggregate called the Pradhan, which is unmanifest in an unmanifest state and then a manifest state. It is that power is given to Brahma through which he can create. Therefore, Brahma Gayatri is actually worshiping the Lord's divine energy, Shakti, through which Brahma creates. That's why it's called Brahma Gayatri. But it's ultimately referencing the light, not the bulb. Usually, Brahma is a soul occupying that post who receives that Lord's energy to create. Sometimes if Brahma, the soul is not qualified to occupy the post, God himself will occupy the post in the garb of Brahma. Generally, it's the soul. So higher than Brahma is Shiva. Higher than Brahma is Shiva. Good. Topic is coming, Lord Shiva, so. Yeah. No, 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 he's happy. <laughs> he's happy from the demons, Indra, Brahma, Shiva. Not because, you have to understand, this is not ultimately their challenge for each other, but it's to show the supremacy of Krishna. So therefore Krishna defeats Lord Shiva after that, then he returns to Vrindavan. Then he returns to Vrindavan. Only after Shiva is also defeated. Not that he is, don't, remember, this is not, you know, it's like Shiva is playing chess with Krishna. They're not antagonists, but he's showing that Krishna is supreme. These pastimes are showing that Krishna is supreme. They're not all just one. Shiva and Krishna and Brahma and Indra are not all the same. Agni and Vayu and Varuna and Krishna are not the same. This is Hinduism. This is Sanatan Dharma. Read the Bhagavad Gita. Because people say, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. You're not a real Hindu. You're like a Western colonialist Hindu. <laughs> Western colonialism trying to take back over India and pretend, you know, some kind of weird Christian Vaishnav Hinduism mix. No, if you say you're a Hindu, all Hindus will say, I accept and acknowledge the Bhagavad Gita. Why? This is the basis of our Hinduism. Bhagavad Gita and Vedanta Upanishad. What does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita? All these demigods are just my opulences and they're all in material existence as a spark of my splendor. All resting upon me, I am in my transcendental abode. Therefore, don't perform spiritual life in an improper way. If you want the highest result, properly perform spiritual life. Don't do it avidi purvakam. You can get some result, but not the proper result. That means only the placebo effects or the painkiller effects or the mystic opulences effects, right? So-called spiritual material ecstasy. You can get that. The highest achievement is sense gratification. You can become a Lord Brahma, all stuck within the duality of material life, where one day you're Brahma, you're in that bulb persona of Brahma, and then the bulb breaks, and then you're an ant. And then you go climb back up and that eternal snake. So therefore, Krishna says, ultimately, after all those different personalities are showing Krishna as supreme, then Krishna goes back to Vrindavan. My mission is accomplished. Time to go home. And then that's when in Dwarka he's lamenting and they build the replica of Vrindavan called Nava Vrindavan. He went to sleep in Samadhi. When he woke by the chantings of the name of Sri Radha, Lita Vishaka, then 
They prepared the chariots and he went to Vrindavan. So Krishna is on his way to Vrindavan. This is how we ended last class, right? Krishna is on his way to Vrindavan. Krishna is on his way to Vrindavan. As Krishna enters Vrindavan, it's described, Sri Radha is present in her kunj, waiting. When will Krishna come to Vrindavan? When will this material pastime, transcendental pastime in, on earth be over? When can we go to Vrindavan? She didn't want to come in the first place. That means Shakti always wants to fulfill Krishna's desire, but this is part of their dynamic play. Part of the way she fulfills his desire is being contrary to his desire. That's part of the way she fulfills his desire, by her contrary mood, Vamya Bhav. I don't want to go. This is also fulfilling his desire. But the point is that what desire of Krishna's is she fulfilling? That conditioned souls should have a chance to come to Vrindavan. And the supremacy of Vrindavan should be shown and the eternal pastime should be shown so that people can take shelter of those manifest pastimes, Prakrit Vrindavan, manifest in this earth. And by meditating on those pastimes of Krishna, his sweetness, his beauty, his names, by doing that sadhana, they can pierce through this material covering and enter the abode of divine consciousness. Where our spirit is meant to be present, that light can return to spirit. We are that, tatvamasi, but what is that? Therefore, Lord Chaitanya says what? That's one of the famous verses, but he says that we are that concentrated particle of transcendental consciousness, servant of the Supreme Whole. Gopi Bhartu. And who is that Supreme? He is Gopi Bhartu, the beloved of all, the beloved of the dearmost Gopis. Follow their footsteps, enter Vrindavan. Therefore, Uddhava, who is Uddhava? The wisest person on earth, that is Uddhava. Who is he a disciple of? The guru of the demigods. So the local god's guru. Brihaspati. The guru of the local god, the guru of Indra, Brihaspati, his chief disciple was Krishna's dearmost friend outside of Vrindavan. And he spent his whole life glorifying Vrindavan. Uddhava's whole purpose on earth was to glorify Vrindavan. It's the highest abode. Radharani is saying, come to Vrindavan. Krishna, come to Vrindavan, bring all your friends. Bring everybody. You know, when Krishna came to earth, he could feel the suffering of the souls. When there's a pastime of Krishna going to save the sons of the Brahmin that deceased or deceased <laughs> at birth. And Krishna went beyond the coverings of different layers and he saw the hellish region. And he saw everyone suffering and he felt concern for them. He said, if you ultimately want to stop this cycle of suffering, what should you do? Come to Vrindavan. Painkillers will not suffice. Come to Vrindavan. You don't need painkillers in Vrindavan. Painkillers are very helpful in this world. Very helpful. But we should go to that place where you don't need them. Yes, very helpful. But ultimately, the goal isn't to sit and meditate. The goal is to be actively engaged. The soul's nature is to be active. So we simply have to enter Vrindavan, be present there. There is a process, it's called sadhana bhakti. That state is realized within, and then it is entered. And once it's achieved, sadhus can be there while here in the Surup city stage. There's a story of, so Krishna appeared in Vrindavan and Rathiyatra, Jagannath Leela, everyone gets to come in Vrindavan. Swami Prabhupada established Rathiyatra all over the whole world so that everyone will learn about the supremacy of Vrindavan. They should come to Vrindavan. 
So that's Krishna's Leela. Rathyatra means everywhere. Jagannath Rathyatra is going on. This is go to Vrindavan. Advertising. Marketing for Vrindavan. Why? This is the ultimate place where the soul can be happy. Ananda. Ananda and What does Lord Chaitanya say? Pratipadang Purnam Ritasvadhanam at every step, tasting complete nectar. That is Vrindavan. Ananda and Buddhivardhanam, ever increasing bliss. That is Vrindavan. That is the spiritual nature, not the material nature. So we must go towards that. Krishna arrived, Radharani saw Krishna. Krishna saw Radharani. Krishna appeared then in the Jagannath form, showing that he is Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan all in one. That is Jagannath. Jagannath is Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan all in one. Right? Make sense? You see the deity form of Krishna, that's Bhagavan, the personal form of God. But Jagannath, Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan. Conceptually, it's all there. And he's showing that ultimately that Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan is Brajeshatanaya Staddhama Vrindavanam. All present within Braj Krishna. Gurudev would say, Brahman, Paramatma is all ultimately, mostly in relation to material life. Right? Brahman, Fulgence of God projected upon matter, darkness, sun, fulgence, energy, life. All the projection of the Brahman upon darkness, Maya, that which is separate from God. Paramatma, higher than Brahman. Why? Because it's the super soul within every conscious soul. The soul of every soul. But Bhagavan is ultimately what is transcendental. So Jagannath then appeared before Radharani with the glance of Radharani, with her sidelong glance when she opened her eyes and looked at Krishna when he returned to Vrindavan, saying, this is where we are supposed to be. This is the manifestation of the kunj of the heart of the divine goddess Sri Radha, Vrindavan. Then Jagannath appeared. This is very mystical. After that, sometime after that, Krishna's pastimes in this Vrindavan, manifest Vrindavan, wound up. That traveling, transcendental pastime of the Lord entered Jagannath and from there entered the spiritual world. This is how our Vaishnavas describe it. She, again, words, right? But it helps give you a conceptual framework, right? But it's described, Radharani entered Krishna. All the gopis entered Radharani. Radharani entered Krishna. All the cowherd boys and gopas otherwise entered Balaram. And Purnamasi Yoga Maya or Subhadra, everything else. And then enter the transcendental abode. So the conclusion is what? What is the final conclusion? What does our Gurudev say? What does Lord Chaitanya say? What did Rupa Goswami say? Where is the Ayodhya Puri of Ram? Where is the Mathura of Krishna? Knowing that nothing in the material universe lasts forever. To practice spiritual life, go back home, back to Godhead. Swami Prabhupada's words, back home, back to Godhead. Rupa Goswami said, go to Vrindavan. Prahlad Maharaj, when Prahlad Maharaj is asked by his father in a different age, what did he say? What is the highest knowledge? That sadhu manye suravharya dehinam sadasamudigna diyama satkarhat hidvatma patam griham andakupam vanam goto yadharim ashrayata. Take shelter of Hari, go to Vrindavan. Escape the blind well of material life. This is the teaching of all the sages. So we should aim for Vrindavan. Aim for Vrindavan. How will we go to Vrindavan? Very easy process. If your aim is set, process is easy. Very simple. But you have to practice. That is our message. We should aim for Vrindavan. Krishna entered that spiritual world and said, Come. Therefore, Jagannath Ratyatra. Come to Vrindavan, Leela. Highest Leela. For the conditioned soul, 
So this is the conclusion of Krishna Lila. The conclusion of Krishna Lila is he manifests Vrindavan, performed Nitya Lila, Naimatika Lila, then he left Vrindavan, performed his necessary services, establishing Dharma, killing the demons, everything. Then showed the demigod showed his supremacies, Indra, Brahma, Shiva. Then he said, okay, now let's return to Vrindavan. From there, the transcendental Vrindavan. As described in Rig Veda, different Puranas, Vrindavan is the highest abode. So we are all aiming toward that Vrindavan. And we will conclude our evening by going and worshiping Radha Krishna and their gopis who are in Vrindavan. In Mangalarti, what do we pray? You are in Vrindavan. Subha drishti karo ebe jagatera prati jaguka hridaye mora tu mangalarati. The Mangalarti means from the spiritual world of Vrindavan, may you glance towards us in this material world and awaken our attraction towards you so that we can enter the spiritual world. So we can be with you and serve you there in love. Hare Krishna.